so yeah okay so the point of this documentary is very much to just interrogate the idea of whether or not Port Elizabeth is a place that an artist can make a living and also just to speak to some people in like different areas of the, of the art scene you know whether they're performing artists or ceramicists or lecturers or artists themselves to see like okay do they think that PE is not a good place to practice or the Eastern Cape is kind of losing talent just because, you know, Joburg and Cape Town are more attractive. Or maybe, maybe just that it's all a marketing ploy to kind of justify certain programs that are done, but maybe not, I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe just to kind of promote certain programs as a nice story to tell people, or maybe it isn't. Hi, <laughs> my name is Bulelani Bui. Um, I'm born and bred here in PE. Uh, I study electrical engineering at Russell Road College. And after I was done with that, I just went on, did music, and band, band, events, events, um, gigs, gigs. You know, after you do it a while, they start giving you certificates, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, for the guy who's done the most. Yeah. Um, but um, I sort of live like a, a Batman in my life, you know. Nobody ever sees me do these things, especially from where I'm from. Mm. They would laugh some of them, like, he sings! <laughs> he went away! I'm Duncan Stewart, uh, I'm a visual artist, been in Port Elizabeth for about 16 years. I come from um, originally Limpopo, but having studied in Italy, we decided that Port Elizabeth would be a great place to raise a family, and so we made uh, Port Elizabeth our base, and this is where I have my studio and where I work from. Okay. Um... My name is Mark Ferrer. Um, I've pretty much been involved in the arts, mostly performing arts, um, since I was a child. Um, in fact, the Athenaeum um, is where I'm managing at the moment. Um, I did my first show here in 1979. Okay. I was nine years old. So I have a great love for this building. And uh, yeah, I'm trying my very, very best to make it work. Alright, name is Bozo Elisanda, Maisa, and from a Zocho player, you know, across the Z in the Eastern Cape. And I was born and bred here in PE. My schooling and training all happened within PE years. And born in the 80s. And yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> That's good. A yeah, father of three and a husband as well. Okay. Yeah, That's good. good. It's me. Okay, um, my name is Semi Mbofu. I'm working at GFI at Garali. And I started working here in 2005. And I work with Jeffrey and Mekley. But unfortunately, they all um, resigned and immediately passed away. Now I did work with Robin. After Robin, I worked with Haley, and Haley also passed away. And now I'm working with um, Anna and Rose. My name is Lookout Sivanda. Um, well, I, 
I'm a ceramicist, or I, I make and paint my 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 ceramics. Um, well, I I started doing ceramics. Well, I, I if I'm not mistaken, it was 2006, um, 2006, 2005. But that was only the painting part, mm. and and I. I started making at, at around 2008, 2009. That's when I started making and painting uh, with Elsa van Dijk in Pretoria. And, um, well, I decided to move here in 2015, that is here in PE, okay. in 2015, um, because look, I, I thought I had, I, had, I had done enough in Pretoria. Where, where I was, I felt like Look, I needed to grow. Uh, despite the fact that I, I, we we had a good we had a good relationship and 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 all of that, I felt like I needed to grow, and that's when I I, I, I decided I'm going to come to PE and and start look at ceramics. An idea that I'm looking at is, as I told you earlier, this idea that the Eastern Cape is a is a hotbed of artistic and creative talent, but. For some reason or another, either economic reasons or people wanting to go into better markets like Joburg and Cape Town, uh, the artists and creatives, if they don't find something they can do here and make it profitable, they end up going to those cities. I think there is validity to your point. I think obviously to survive, artists have traditionally um, needed patrons or sponsors or a, an economy to sell their work and um, the Eastern Cape is understood to be one of the poorer economies. Uh, having said that, uh, the word you used was like a hotbed of creative talent. I don't think it's that obvious that that's unique to the Eastern Cape. I think any area has its incredible you know, um, uh, uh, sort of resources and creative resources, lots of creative people. Mm -hmm. But but what we see is not often indicative of what's there. So when you see the media and artists in the media and artists in sort of popular culture being promoted, those are invariably uh, alongside sort of uh, strong marketing and strong sort of social media campaigns which are often led within sort of hotspot cities, say the big sort of, uh, you know, the big hitting cities like Cape Town and Johannesburg and places like that that are more international, um, Etakweni, Durban. Um, so yeah, I think there's, I think there's merit to the idea um, that artists tend to leave more difficult economies, but I also know many artists that uh, that that have been able to um, overcome the financial, uh, or not overcome, but struggle through it uh, because the choices that keep them in a certain place outweigh uh, the, the sort of the, the financial gain of going to one of the bigger cities. Certainly that was one of the reasons we chose to stay in the Eastern Cape was because the quality of life here, uh, which is of a higher priority to me than becoming world famous, or becoming well known or building my brand in say a commercial city. I'm not saying that's unimportant, I think it's incredibly important, but my priorities were where can we as a family do well? And uh, the Eastern Cape in that aspect is, in my view, you know, unsurpassable. I think, I think, I think that idea, <laughs> that idea has been overplayed, you know, and it's almost like a hypno, a, a hypnotoad, just like stay in this thought, believe that this thought is real. Maybe at one time, one year, five people, seven people became like real, they made it in Joburg and all those five people were from Joburg. You know what I mean? I mean, we're from the Eastern Cape per se. Um, at one time, but it's not like that for everyone. There are many artists who are based there and they would like, let's say, to keep that um, that being a normal person and not being like a superstar mm. and they keep quiet and they're making it elsewhere around, especially now with internet, you can make it in Japan, you know, yeah. staying in the shack, 
you like think in Japan, everybody's playing you <laughs> and you're there, you're keeping quiet, you don't want us to know that you're like a multi-millionaire artist or whatever, whatever, there's, there are those mentality. Mm. Well, I think definitely people move away from the Eastern Cape purely because of opportunity, like you said. Um, there are very, very few opportunities. Um, at the Athenaeum, what I'm doing now, and I think it's the first time it's been done, is I'm having an open exhibition, which means anyone can, can enter. And the talent that I'm seeing is phenomenal. Um, people are over the moon because they've never had an opportunity to exhibit, um, which is why I'm doing this, or why we are doing this, to actually create these opportunities so that we don't have people having to leave to try and find an opportunity where we can actually exhibit our works. So there's that facet to it, mm. you know, that we also know that there's corruption that is so vast, but I think corruption is across the country. It's not just this thing, K. Yeah. But however, it's, it's, it's a reality here, it's so much, you know. And, and so we see it in the arts, that you guys must leave the Eastern Cape so that you bring glory to the other provinces. That's, that, that, that's how it looks to me. Look, the thing is, Joburg and Cape Town is, I can say it's too, it's too much. And it's not, not in terms of saying there's too much business, I can't handle it, no. It's just, it's too busy. Uh, look, I, I, and besides that, in Pretoria, the support that I got uh, wasn't exactly, you know, the support that I'm getting here. Hmm. Um, or maybe it's because of, net, of, of networking in Pretoria. I didn't network that much, uh, you know, to get to know a lot of artists, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to have to have one-on-ones with them, to sort of like speak, speak basically with them. But here, I, you know, after, you know, interacting with, with, with a lot of artists and, and doing a few, a few exhibitions with them, but the support is massive. For me, I always said, um, if you are a well-known person and you are a friendly person in, in Port Elizabeth, when you come to the gallery and, and hang your exhibition, you find that those people they Sussex. So um, my experience um, in the gallery working with the artist, I can say for now it's much better for the young artist to um, to lift up themselves through the art. Because before when I started here in 2005, we didn't allow any artist to come and exhibit in the gallery before they do they do exhibition somewhere else. If you look in the Eastern Cape, you use the example of like, uh, I think it's New Bethesda, where it's like there's an art community there. So people go there specifically because they know there's creativity, there's art stuff. So they're like, I want to go there, that's how it gets to survive. And then maybe BE could kind of, if the artists within BE and the creators on different levels were to maybe kind of approach it in the same way, then they go, well, we're here, we don't necessarily think it's better elsewhere. What can we do? I think sort of the, the cohesiveness of an artistic community uh, is, is really important to develop. And obviously, I mean, I'm just thinking of Cape Town, I'm thinking of the bag factory and places up in, um, you know, in Dornfontein and places in Joburg, uh, where they've got like lots of people together in community and they've made space available. You know, if the Metro was willing to recognize what an amazing impact artists collaborating can have on the city. That would be awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a case of they don't see, I don't think everyone recognizes the value that artists bring. Uh, we are trying to create an artistic hub here. So, all right, I've got an idea. I'm thinking like that. That's my idea. 
but we want other artists to come here and go, well, why don't you do this? You know, and then all of a sudden, the box is ripped open. I'm an artist, it's in my nature. We create out of nothing. It's, it's even, it's way funner when there's something because you've got to just manipulate it into something else. You don't have that burden to be like, yanking it out from nowhere. Yeah. And then you start manipulating. It's here, yeah, the problem is caused by things not working properly. So you find a way around to make it work and using the same things that are there that were meant to make it work. This thing where I'm saying there's a cultural background, there's, there's, there's just a lot that this material that is clay can wake us up into being self-reliant and to understand because there's creams that are used for beauty that have clay in them. That's true. Yeah. You know, and there's also stuff it's, it's for detoxing now where you can eat clay and it will, you know, detox you because of its binding mm. character that when you eat it, it will come out with whatsoever that your body doesn't need. Mm. You know, so the, the, the workshop was in that and also how in terms of environment it can assist in terms of economy, you know, building economy element of our country, mm. you know, how we can benefit. So, would, would you say, like, through your, the, your interest in ceramics and then initially clay and then ceramics, you've kind of seen how creativity can look at something kind of mundane and find a way to think about it in terms of not only just creative production, but also, like, maybe it could be used for more everyday uses that mm. can benefit people in the economy, create jobs. So it's not just like we create something cool exactly. that someone can buy and look at, but there's something more to it. More to it, exactly. How many people don't have jobs out there? But a person like me can can employ about three, four at a time. And how many people, how many artists are there? Just for instance, let's say 15. Let, 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 let me just say 15. So that's 15 times three. Yeah. Basically, that's 45 people that, that now has, have got jobs. So if if we are if we are if 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 we are, if, if we are taken seriously, I think a lot can can change. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think for now I don't think I don't think I don't think we are. Okay. So from my. My parents, like when they're telling story of their young days, that the Eastern Cape, how it was vibrant in terms of arts, performing arts and visual arts and sports, mm. you know, and in the time where apartheid was, you know, deadly and crucial, and how the arts kept them together, how the arts uh, provided, you know, and how how the arts also maintain the, the 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 morals of the people around, you know. And you find out that hey, they didn't have much in terms of support from the government or these departments that were solely for for you know for the people. But what art uh, got them? to be so confident about themselves and to find time to have fun when things were just you know, haywire. And so when I look at this time where supposedly the environment is conducive, you know, for, for people who were underdeveloped and kept back to flourish, but you find now it's the time that art has been taken back or down pressed. Mm. So it, it, it is a big thing that, that's why I could not understand when the principal of this institution said to me the reason why they shut down the art department here, the formal one, was just based on the Eastern Cape is perceived to be a automobile uh, environment because of the factories that are here around. 
that you did not look at the other aspects that you set him down? I, I think there is a disconnect from sort of the commercial and PE known as a blue collar town and more motor industry related. There's a disconnect from, well, you know, artists are like, we just can't relate to them because they don't think like we do. But that's exactly, especially in COVID, why we need to open up our thinking. If someone that that runs that runs a certain institution is not from a certain political party and all those things, so the funding is, is not going to be it's, it's it's not going to be the same if it was vice versa. So politics plays a, a huge role. That is just an example, but there is a lot of things behind that, and it, it, it plays a huge role in our in our art. That's why you get you get you get you know people getting getting um, tenders to do murals and people getting um, but who, who gets the tender to do a mural do you think do you think it's do you think it's it's it's, it's going to be political if it's if, if 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 there's a tender to do a mural most of the times in, in tenders it, it is there is a lot of politics I think the, the well-being of a city, of a country, of a family, rests on the, on the quality of the person, person's leadership in charge. So leadership is critical, and if you know anything about the Eastern Cape, it's gone through, it's gone through the worst of, of infighting and political scrapping and leadership and that, and, uh, which is tragic, you know? And it's, uh, it's often fueled by greed which is worse, you know, that the nature of artists is a gift economy. We give things, we don't expect anything back. You can look at a work of art for nothing. You can go to, a, artists are givers, uh, but there needs to be a reciprocal economy to sustain that. There needs to be a sort of a market economy to sustain that. Uh, so when you have greedy people coming in and emptying resources that, would, that could necessarily sustain a gift economy, across the board, you rob everyone. And I think uh, the consequence is, is uh, people lose hope. Artists must, in a way, also give to the community as well. Um, maybe not financially, but to create beauty. Um, and that's what it's about. do it it's like they don't have the mindset to do it it's they have the mindset it's just like they haven't done it enough yeah they haven't practiced enough so because a lot of and energy is distributed you know constantly every day one day they have to be an artist they have to be also a person they got no more problems yeah. with life they have to want money they have to their own you know so maybe administration will have like 20% and with that and even not that constant practice every time every now and then you do at means 20% it will be different than a person who does it every day who practices so it just needs a bit of discipline if they can channel even some of the discipline to their art form into a bit of that in a matter of a couple of three months at least man the basis will be on top because actually I was interviewing with Alani mm. he said a similar thing. It's like we have these in his experience where artists will come to obviously more the fine artists yes. and they'll be like they have these they talk about these ideas and stuff but they don't actually either put them into practice because they don't know how to or they don't necessarily have the drive to because it's like they they are talented but they don't necessarily have the well-rounded capabilities to do all the sides of what it means to actually get into the idea. Yeah. Um, and, and it's different, I mean, artists are creative people. Um, they, certain areas, they have a, a creative talent, but maybe not a business talent uh, or mindset. And getting people all together with those mindsets and gelling them together, you can get a great result.
I create my own my my own opportunities because to be honest, if I if I sit here and say I'm gonna try and get funding, how long do you think it will be for me to actually try to expand a bit? It will take a while. Exactly. It will, it will it will take a while and the person that I'm gonna go to to get funding is might be the person that doesn't know anything about ceramics. Mm. Now, if I now have this paper that says I need five hundred thousand, now they are gonna they, they, they are going to question what what are you gonna use what, what are you gonna use five five hundred thousand for? To look at other artists and always want what they have, it's kind of not nice. It's mm. unattractive. It's not creative, you know. But if there are more events and activities happening there, then let's do it. But uh, I don't think it's it's it's, it's that it's that notion that artists here in the Eastern Cape are like vanquished to Joburg, and even the artists in Joburg are vanquished to Dubai and New York. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even the yeah, ones in Cape Town, they are like vanquished into Europe and Amsterdam and all of those places. Mm -hmm. So. And they don't busy talk about Bana in order to make it, you know, make, maybe they do. You go big in New York or you go big in Japan, it's always going big with artists in elsewhere than where they're from, where there's a bit more maybe crop or more money, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, sometimes I think we just, um, we just need a bit more courage. I think it's, um, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's like, just need some courage to go and shake hands with someone, say hello, what do you think of this idea? And, yeah. uh, and, and take some risks. I hope, if anything, I hope COVID has given us the gift of, uh, of courage to take some risks, try things we've never done. I think the idea that Port Elizabeth is in the Eastern Cape is kind of like this hotbed that gets used and abused and never really amounts to much is I don't know, maybe there's some validity to it for certain people. I think it's, there's certainly something to the statement, something to the idea. Uh, but I also think for those people who kind of want to make their own opportunities or take the opportunities that do exist and then do something with it, there is certainly that idea that well, it's not the end of the world. We can certainly make something for ourselves here. You know, we don't necessarily have to move to Joburg or Cape Town. Really, I enjoy to be with the artist. And I enjoy to be in front and welcoming everybody and selling the art. So that's, that's a part of it that you enjoy? Enjoy yes. the working with the people and yes. seeing all the different, different characters. <laughs> there are some real, like, absolutely incredible dealers. Yeah, I just, wow.